Yo, today I'm going to teach you guys how to navigate the NPC software. Let's get it. What's up? This is the King of Caesar bringing you gear reviews, unboxings, and tutorials just like this one. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing and hit that bell notification button like you're playing sock and boppers. I want somebody to get KO'd. <laughs> If you're my age, you know a little bit about the sock and boppers. <laughs> yeah, let's get right into the video. With the introduction of stems, people are getting excited about this new feature that's coming to the NPC. But what a lot of people don't know is that this feature is for the software only. So what this means is that a lot of people are going to have to take their NPCs and plug it into their computer for the first time in their life. Because a lot of the NPC user base is standalone only. Now using the software is not that complicated, so I'm going to give you five tips that will help you navigate the MPC software today. What a lot of people don't know is that the MPC serves as an audio interface when you hook it up to the software, but it has to be assigned, and usually it is a default setting when you go into the software, but not always. To make sure your inputs and outputs are being seen by the software, you want to go to the top left where it says MPC. You're going to click that. When the drop down menu comes, you're going to go down to settings and going to click that, and then a pop up will show up that says preferences. The IO device tab is the first one that you see, and this is where you can change what device is used for your inputs and outputs. So right now I have Universal Audio Thunderbolt. I can switch this easily to the MBCX audio for the inputs and outputs if I have the cables coming out of the outputs of my MPC. For all my converter people out there, note that you don't have to use the MPC's inputs and outputs if you don't want to. If you have another device, you can change the settings to that one. In those same settings, I can switch to the Apollo, and I am now using the sound card that's inside the Apollo instead of the MPC. When you hook the MPC to the computer, it now turns into a controller also, but it still functions the way that it would if it was in standalone. So you really never have to take your eyes off the unit, and that's one of the things that I like about the MPC. But learning how to use the software is something that you should learn. I'm going to go through all the icons I think people are going to use the most, and if they have corresponding buttons, then I'm going to show you that as well. We're in the MPC software right now, and we have the beautiful MPC X SE right here. We're in the main menu. Up here, you can see that this says main mode. Now, if I go right here, this is track view. And if I click that, this button, the main menu button, will turn orange. That's a corresponding button. Now, we can also go up here, this right here. And this is what's cool about the software, too. When you first get in it, I think you can turn this function off. But if you hover your mouse above it, it will tell you what, it, what each thing does. So this is program edit. So if I hit program edit, guess what? This button now turned on because that's program edit. The next one is sample edit right here on your MPC X that one lit up. Now this one is going to light up because the next one is pad mix. As you can see up here, this is going to say pad mix. Once I click that, the pad mix button turns on. Then we have the channel mix. Channel mix turns on. Then we have the sampler. That's right here. So this is when you go to the sampler, this button will light up because it all corresponds with the software. We have the looper, which is the secondary function of this button. So it now goes from red to orange, letting you know that you're on the looper. And then right here, we have track mute, which is also right here, a button. And then if you go to this little drop down right here at the top, you can also go down here and you can hit pad mute as well. So you can go to your track mutes and you can go to your pad mutes. And this, this button turns orange again. Now on your MPC in your browse menu, that's where you can find like your expansions and you can go to your files and find different samples that you have in your MPC. So if I go to browse right here, I can now go over to expansions and I can see all the expansions that I have here. 
And this is what I mean that you don't have to, you don't even have to leave the screen if you don't want to when you're using the NPC in controller mode because it's still right here. But you can also see this type of stuff in the software, like places to browse and all that. I'm going to show you right now. Now in your NPC software, down here on the left side, you got a couple icons as well. Some of these icons you probably won't use, but you might want to go into your project info. This is what shows your project. It shows you the samples that you're using and your sequences and all the programs that you're using at the moment. Now, project notes is a pretty cool one, too, because this is where you could put uh, some of your metadata in. So you could put the title, you could put the artist, the original artist, the name of the album, the year that you made it, the genre and any copyright that you have in here. You know, just to keep the notes of the project and what you're doing, which is pretty cool. Now, this is when you get to your media browser. Now, this is where you can go in and demo different sounds and you can even search for the sound that you want. So, like, if I want to kick, I could put in kick right here and then it'll bring up some kicks. And it'll also demo, them, as you can see right now. Up top here, you can even see your expansions. But if you want to see your expansions a little bit better, then you can go down here to the expansion browser, click that, and now you have a nice horizontal view of all your expansions that you have in the software. Hey, if you guys are liking the video so far, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. I really appreciate it. Thanks. The NPC main screen is where you spend a lot of your time on the NPC, but where is it located in the software? Well, let me show you. On the left hand side, there's a strip where you can find the functions to change the tracks, sequence, programs, and the different functions of a track like loading plugins or MIDI or key groups and programs. Let me show you how. So right here, this little box is what you will see on your main screen on the touch screen, along with this transport up here. Now you can go in here and you can change the sequence if you want to. You can also go down here to track and change the track number and go to new tracks, but you can also change the functions of the tracks like you can right here in this little square. You can go to your drum programs, your key groups, your plugins, your MIDI, your clips, or you can use the CV outs. And that's how you would use it right here on the touch screen. But if you wanted to find that in the software, that's where you will find it. Mixing in the software is a lot better than standalone. The layout is better. It makes it linear so that you can see all the faders. It also makes it so that you can see the pad and the channel mix at the same time. Let me show you. So now that you're in the software, there's two ways that you can do this. And we're going to go through the first one right now. Back in the main screen, you can see these icons up here for the main functions. You got one is a pad mixer. So once you go in there, you can see that I have all the faders for the program that's on track two. Now in track mute, I have everything muted except track two. We'll go back to pad mixer. When I hit play, you'll see the faders move into the corresponding pads that I have programmed on this track. You can also see as much when I go to channel mix. Right down here, I have my track program set right here. And when I hit play, you'll see only that fader moving. Now that was one way that you can access the mix. The best way that I find to do it is going down to this little icon right here. Now this will bring up a totally new mixer window. And as you can see, we have the pad mix and the channel mix showing at the same time. Now what's also great about this is that if I wanna see just the pad mix, I can go up here to the top and hit that and it'll take me just to the pad mixer and, and it has it spread big so that I can see it and it shows me everything so I can move it in small increments if I want to and really fine tune the way that I mix this drum pattern. So now while you're mixing, you'll be able to do what you would if you were mixing in a DAW. You got your pan right here so you can pan it left or right. You can solo and mute, but you can also do your sends right here and you also have your inserts. Now we know on the MPC and standalone mode, once you set up your chain, you have to keep it that way, but not in the software. So I can go in here and I can add this compressor. 
But if I figure out that I don't want that compressor there, I can take this compressor and I can now move it down to right here to the second one and then add a new plugin right here if I was going to add like an EQ or anything else. What I could also do is if you're on a Mac, you can you can push Alt and you can drag it. You can drag it over. And I can Alt again and I can just keep dragging these. That's something that you can't do in standalone. And just like this, if I'm in pad mode, I can also go to my channel mix and I can see the same thing. If I just want to see the channel mix, I can see the channel mix. If I want to see the pad mix, I can see the pad mix. If I want to see both of them, I can see them both at the same time. I can also go back to pad mix and if I want to go down to this icon, I can see the pads and it'll tell me what pad is corresponding to each fader. So this is how to navigate the mixing window when you're in the MPC software. I know when you go into the NPC software, it can be a lot at first. Everything seems crowded and you're probably like, where do I start? Standalone is simple and straightforward with little tabs that you can open, but everything is pretty much right there at your fingertips. But guess what? The software is the same way. In the software, you can pick what you want to see and what you don't want to see. Let me show you. When you come into the NPC software, it most likely looks like this. You got the MIDI window right here. You got this piece of the software, that, that, and you're probably like, what is all this stuff, right? You can also get rid of some of this stuff so that you can see exactly what you want to see. For instance, if you want to see just this MIDI window, all these icons that are lit up right here, you can click these and get rid of the corresponding thing that is going to. So for instance, if I want to get rid of this whole left side, I can go down here to this eye, click that and that now disappears. If I want to get rid of this window right here, we're on the expansion browser. I can just click that that's lit up. And what I'll do is just click that. And now the expansion window goes away. And now you can just focus right on the MIDI window. And it's the same thing with all the other windows. When you click on it, it's just going to show you what you need to see. I go into the sampler. Now I'm in the sample edit and I can just see that stuff. If I want to bring it back, then I just go back down here and I click that and it comes back. And if I want to bring this back, then I just go down there and I click that and it comes back. Also for editing MIDI, if you just want a huge screen of just MIDI notes, you can also go down here, get rid of that like we did before, get rid of this. But you can also get rid of this because you don't really need to see this. This is on your NPC in controller mode, you can see all this stuff on the pass and on the Q leak, so you don't really need that. So all you have to do is go down to this box, click that, and now that disappears. And all you have now is the MIDI window, so you can manipulate your MIDI notes and be able to edit the way that you want to. Now what I just showed you is a way to continue creating music without unwanted distractions or tabs up on your computer. And this ultimately will give you a better workflow. <laughs> Now, as you can see, there's a lot of benefits to the software, and it's really not as intimidating as some would think. If you use the MPC software, there are a lot of other upsides too, like being able to use the power of your computer, being able to use third-party VSTs like Native Instruments and Waves, and other things that we will discuss in a later video. Furthermore, if you guys have any other questions about controller mode, leave them in the comment section below. I will either answer them or I will put it in a video if I get a lot of the same question. The NPCs are really a triple threat machine. They are the only machine that I've seen that you can use in standalone. You can hook to your computer and use in controller mode, and you can also use as a plugin in another DAW of your choice. At this point, you guys know that I'm a fan and I do highly recommend them. If you guys are interested in the NPCs, I will have sound links in the description where you guys can check them out for yourselves. Remember, music is therapy. Y'all stay safe, be blessed, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>